So the trickster is finally back. And I mean the real trickster, James Jesse. For about a decade now, we've had to settle for a 2-bit wannabe punk posing as a trickster. This kid, Axel Walker. Some people actually seem to like him, but I never accepted Walker. There is only one trickster, and he is James Jesse. Now, as I've been informed by several people, Jesse actually returned several months ago. I haven't read that issue though, but from what I've gathered, there was only a small role. Possibly a setup for this issue. It's in this issue that Jesse returns in a big way, and he's also accompanied by a new origin story. So let's have a look at this comic, and the revamped Trickstar origin it offers us. This issue, Flash 66, is out right now by the way. It was released just a few days ago. It's very unusual for me to review something so fresh, something that's still in stores. In fact, this is the first time I'm doing it. Considering that, I will try to keep this video as spoiler-free as possible. The story, titled Afraid of Iron Heights, was written by Joshua Williamson and penciled by Scott Collins. It's presented as a rogue profile, like the ones Jeff Johns used to do during his classic Wally West run almost 20 years ago now. So the story basically focuses on different parts of Jesse's past, all leading up to the present. We get flashbacks to his childhood and life in the circus. Just like in his first appearance from the 60s, Jesse and his parents are trapeze artists. They call themselves the Flying Jessies, and it's actually mentioned in the story that they stole that name from the Flying Graysons. We always knew the writers did that back in the 60s, but now it's actually canon in the comics themselves, and that was a nice touch. Also, just like in the 60s, Jesse doesn't actually want to be a trapeze artist. He'd rather sit and read books about Jesse James. Now, in the original story, he didn't want to be a trapeze artist because he was afraid of heights. In this story, we're initially led to believe that he's afraid of heights here too, but then they kinda do a twist on that, and I'm not entirely sure if he ever was afraid of heights or not. Again, I don't want to spoiled too much, so that's as far as I'll go there. This comic does a lot more with Jesse's parents than any other from the past. We didn't really know Jack squat about the Jesse family in the 60s origin or subsequent versions. They were just trapeze artists who forced their reluctant son to follow in their footsteps. That's really all we knew. Well, here we learn that they're actually con men, tricksters themselves. Mama and Papa Jesse are really shady characters, crude small-time criminals who con their audiences out of their cash. At first, they seem very unsympathetic. As we're led to believe, they basically abused James. But it's later revealed that this is actually part of a trick. I won't reveal the actual nature of the trick, of course. I was very glad to see this twist, because the parents were being portrayed as so over-the-top cruel, it was just ridiculous. I was rolling my eyes at it, thinking Williamson had completely dropped the ball. So desperate was he to make James tragic, he turned his parents into parodies. Luckily, that wasn't the case, though. You almost had me there, Williamson. So what about the airwalking shoes? In the original story, James invents them while he's still in the circus. He uses them during his act so he won't be afraid of falling. That was the entire reason this kid, just like that, invented scientific marvels. In this story, he doesn't invent them until much later. It's explained in Jesse's narration that he pulled a con at Star Labs, posing as a lab technician. While there, he picked up a few things, like for example, how to invent airwalking shoes. It's pretty flimsy, but at least it's better than the original. It always works was very ridiculous that a teenager with zero scientific skills just invented airwalking shoes out of thin air. This version is kinda weak too, but an improvement. I can't fault Williamson for not coming up with something better though. It is pretty tricky. When a character isn't a scientific genius, how the hell do you explain his gadgets? Maybe he stole them, but then he wouldn't be special. He'd basically be Axel Walker, who stole his gadgets from Jesse. These issues are probably why Williamson chose to just quickly brush over the shoes in the narration, and not even show their creation. Eh, I'm fine with that. So overall, the origin story is very similar to the original version. I'm happy about that. I don't like it when they radically change origins. Retelling an origin and making it better, more in-depth is fine. But changing it to something completely different is just stupid. I mean, how are these characters ever going to be defined if they keep coming from entirely different places? How are we ever going to know them? Luckily, that didn't happen to Jesse. Essentially, he's still the same guy as he's always been. We know him a bit better now, though, and he makes a bit more sense. This guy was a trickster, since day one. It's in his blood, literally. He got it from his parents. Jesse's supervillain career was really just an extension of his circus career. Besides retelling his origin, what this comic also does is explain where the hell he's been all these years. James was absent during the entire New 52 era, and he never appeared in Rebirth until recently. I just assumed he didn't exist, and that Flashpoint erased him from history. Well, apparently that's not the case at all. At least, not any longer. James has been locked up in Iron Heights this entire time. Hence, the title of the comic. 
He plagued the Flash as a trickster and ran with the rogues for a few years, but then his act began to grow stale and predictable and he was eventually caught by the Flash and sent to Iron Heights. He'd spent time in other prisons before, but always found a way to escape using his conman skills. Jesse figured he'd easily pull this again in Iron Heights and was full of confident bravado. The cruel Warden Wolf could not have that though. He made it his mission to break Jesse's spirit and keep him locked up forever. I won't go into greater details of course, as then I'll spoil too much, but yeah, that's where he's been all his time, locked up in a cage. Eventually he was forgotten by the rest of the world and Axel took his place. It's a great parallel to what's happened in the real world. Of course, I never forgot about you James, I've made that pretty clear in my videos. We do get some other bits too, brief mentions of Jesse joining the FBI and once faking his death. These are references to the pre-Flashpoint continuity, and I'm not sure that they were really necessary. We don't get any mention of the whole Neuron affair though, so I suppose that's no longer canon. All in all, I'm pleased with this comic. It's not a masterpiece, but a good trickster story, a good retelling of his origin, and it offers a good explanation for his absence. And this explanation doesn't just serve as an excuse either. It works great as a story too, and actually adds to the character. I would definitely add this to my top 5 trickster stories, as either number 4 or 3. If I'm gonna complain about something, it's that the words trick and con are mentioned a million times in the story. Yeah, we get it. Jesse is all about tricks and cons. You don't need to hit us over the head with it. That's a fairly minor complaint though. So there you have it, the trickster's triumphant return. This story kinda feels like it was written specifically for me, or us Jesse fans. If you are a fan of Jesse, I highly recommend you pick this up, or really if you're just a fan of the Flash Rogues in general. It seems like this is merely the beginning though and that Williamson has something big planned for the trickster. I guess we'll just see in the following issues. Anyway, as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.